Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 564. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook at Excel Magic Trick 563 to 567. Hey, we want to do a daily Gantt chart. We have a project start date. There's the number of days. Uh, this is the end date, and so five days with this end date, our Gantt chart should say green, green, those are work days. Green, 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 those are work days. And red should be the weekend and the holiday from over here. Let's see how to do this. We're going to use um, two date functions, uh, work day and network days. The first one is the end date. We need to say, hey, uh, there's our start date, and we want five working days. What will be the end date? So I'm going to say equals work day. In this video, we'll do it. Um, to prior how to make a daily Gantt chart um, for Saturday and Sunday weekends. Uh, and this method will work in 2007 and earlier versions. In the next video, we'll see uh, an interesting, awesome new way to do it in 2010 Excel. All right, start date, boom, comma. From this date, we want to go out five work days. Now there's a little problem here. When we tell work day, it'll actually add five days. And if this date is included, which it is here, this would be one too many days. So we need to subtract one, comma, and then the holidays are right here. And I'm going to have to hit the F4 key to lock that. Close parentheses, control enter, and double click and send it down. Now, we need to conditional format, and we're going to have two of them, one for the weekend and holidays and one for work days. So green will be for the uh, actual work days. Now, we're going to highlight this whole range, just like that, and do conditional formatting. That way, our in we change our input dates or the number of days here, and it'll change. There's the active cell, and we're going to have to build a true-false formula from the point of view of that cell right there that asks the question, hey, is the date at the column header in this date or any of the dates all the way up to this date? Well, there's two things we need to ask this date. Hey, is this date greater than or equal to that? And is this date less than or equal to that? Two true falses, both have to be true. So that means we need to use the AND function. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to, actually, I'm going to uh, create the formula in the cell because it's easier to see in the video, equals, and then we'll copy it and put it up in the conditional formatting. Logical test number one. See, if I build it here in the cell, we have these screen tips which help. And if I do it up in the conditional formatting window, it's uh, we don't get to see this. And it's too small. All right, this date, boop. Now, this date, when we copy the formula this way, needs to be relative, but when we go down, it needs to be locked, so I'm going to hit the F4 key and lock the row reference, but not the column. Is that greater than or equal to, boop, that one. Now this one, when we copy this way, it needs to be locked, because this whole row needs to be looking there, but when we move it down, it's got to move to the next one. So this one, F4, F4, F4. Column reference lock, but not the row. All right, then we're going to say this one is less than or equal to this one right here. Same. Uh, logic to lock in the cell references there. All right, close parentheses, and I'm going to control enter to populate all the cells. So you can see we get some trues, true, trues, false, 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 so it looks like it's working just fine. Now I'm going to uh, co copy that, escape. I'm going to use control down arrow and then control right arrow and then alt OD to open up uh, my uh, conditional formatting. New rule, click right there. In earlier versions, you have to point to that first text box and, po and uh, point to formula is. Control V, and I'm going to maybe give it a green or something. Click OK, click OK, click OK. So that's working just fine. Now I'm going to hit the delete key. I don't need all those formulas there. But ooh, look at that. Now we need to do something for uh, the weekends and the holiday, right? Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to build a formula from the point of view of this cell. I'm going to use the uh, net work days. In our next video, we'll, we'll use this one and look at an awesome new trick for 2010. The start date. Now, this is going to get a little trickier. We could do an or and say, are any of the date we could use week? There's lots of ways to do this. Um, but we're going to use net work days. And we're either going to get a count of one, which means it is in our um, range of dates, or a zero, because this net work days counts 
how many work days there are. So I'm going to say this one and lock it um, going down again, but not to the side, because when I go over there, I need to go to the next date. That's the start date, but the end date's going to be the same. That means we can only get a maximum count of one, or we're going to get one or zero. That's all we're going to get. One is true, zero is false. Comma, and then the week ends, the week, the holidays. The assumption for this function right here is that the holidays are Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to hit the F4 key, close parentheses, and control enter. Now you can see we get some zeros here, and that's kind of looking OK. However, uh, we really want a true here and a false here. So what, the way we're going to do that is we're going to wrap um, zero is false. We need to convert that false to a true, and the way you do that is F2, and we use the not. N-O-T, all not does is it turns false to true and true to false. You know, when I first saw that function, I was like, not? When do you ever want to convert a true to a false? Here's a great example. I'm going to control enter. Now, that's perfect. Trues, trues, trues. There's one further uh, complication here. We only want the red to show up here, not down here. So guess what? The logic we used to apply the green, which was that and, we actually have to use this setup here as one true false, and then we have to repeat the same one we did for the green. Now I'm going to with copy this from how about from the uh, formula bar? Control C, Escape. I'm going to hit Delete now. From the active cell right there, I'm going to go Alt O D, open it back up. Um, I'm going to hit New Rule. Um, Control V. I'm going to format it. You can already see that I'm not going to get the right answer here. Click OK. But that's OK. Click OK. We have our two tests. but And we can even click OK and you can see what happens. It does the same thing as the zeros. We need to add another true-false condition for the red. So I'm going to Alt-O-D and edit this. But first, since I've already done the formula here and I need to repeat it up here, I'm going to double click this and then copy just the AND to the AND, not the equal sign, control C, escape, double click this. We need this one and the second one, so I'm going to A and D. Oops, I was thinking I was in the cells. Open parentheses, that's logical test number one. I come to the end, comma, logical test number two, control V, that's that one for the green, close parentheses. Click OK, click OK. And there we have it. Totally awesome Gantt chart. If I change this to 1, it shows me just there. If I change it to 2, if I change it to 3, boom, it jumps. 1, 2, 3 are green, 3 are red. Uh, you could change the start date, too. We change this to the second, right? And that automatically changes. All right, um, totally awesome. Um, daily Gantt chart. When we come back in our next video, we'll see how to do it for um, weekends where it's other something other than Saturday and Sunday. All right, we'll see you next trip.